Hi, this is June Blender from Sapien Technologies, and today we're going to talk about message boxes. Message boxes are really useful for displaying information to the user that requires a user acknowledgement or response. The message box is a child window of the parent window that created it. It's a modal window, which means that as long as the message box is displayed, the parent window is visible, but it's disabled until the user acknowledges the message. And the best part of message boxes is that they're really simple. You create them with one line of code. You don't even need to write an event handler. So let's learn about message boxes. Let's start with a quick reminder about why we even need a message box to display an error message for a PowerShell GUI app. Here's a little application. Let's look at the script. I'm calling getSim instance with a driver class, selecting some properties, and displaying them in outgrid view. And if anything goes wrong, I use the write error commandlet to write an error message. Now, this works perfectly well in the console, but a user in a PowerShell GUI app doesn't have a console. Let's see what their experience would be like. I'm going to create an intentional error by deleting the last letter of my computer name and making the computer name invalid. Huh. Nothing seems to be happening. Let's try again. And again. Because I'm working in PowerShell Studio, as the author of this app, down here in the output window, I can see the error. But the user doesn't have a console. In GUI apps, the user sees only what you display to them. They only see the output that you display, and they only see the errors that you intentionally display to them in a window or other form. So to display an error, you have lots of options. You can create a child form, you can open a web page, but one of the simplest ways is to create a message box. Let's do that. So let's go back to our script and replace this write error command with a message box. I'll comment it out for now. And I want to use the message box snippet, so I'll type msg box and type tab. That was pretty easy. Now it sees, seems that I have a text field and a title field here. So let's grab the text that I used in the error message and replace the text placeholder. And for title, I'll put in computer name error and save. Now when I run the same app and delete that last character, click get, and here's my message box. That was pretty easy. You can certainly use the message box snippet without knowing the technical details behind it, but let's just take a minute to tell you what's going on here. The first line in this snippet is a commented out add type command that adds the system.windows.forms assembly to the session. This lets you use the message box snippet in a regular PowerShell script, a console script. But because we're working in a PSF file, the system.windows.forms assembly is already added. So you can leave it commented out or you can delete it. Here's where the action happens. This looks a little complicated. Let me show you what's happening here. We're using the system.windows.forms.messageBox class and we're calling the showStatic method, a method of the message box class, to create our message box. So, in order to call a static method in PowerShell, you enclose the class name in square brackets, you follow that with two consecutive colons, no intervening spaces, and then the name of the method that you're calling. In this case, it's show. 
This is followed by parentheses. And inside the parentheses, you put the parameters or the parameter values of the method that you're calling. So we don't need to use new object to create an instance of that class, and we don't need to create an event handler or anything else to manage the message box object. Now this last little bit is a cast to void, which is a way of suppressing unwanted output. The show method of message boxes returns some output, and if you don't want it or don't need it, you can cast it to void. This is really similar to doing something more familiar in PowerShell, like piping to out null, or assigning to a null variable. But instead, let's see what the show method returns. I'll create a variable named result, and then I will use the much maligned write host commandlet. And to make this a little bit more obvious, I'm going to use a different variation or overload of the show method that lets me specify the buttons in my message box. And I'm going to select yes, no, and cancel buttons. Okay, now let's see what happens when I run my app. I'll create an error. And now you'll see that that variation or overload gave me three buttons, yes, no, or cancel. Let's click cancel. And right host is writing that the result is cancel. When I click no, the result is no. And when I click yes, the result is yes. The show method of message boxes returns the dialog result which is the name of the button that the user clicked to close the message box and return control to the parent form. You can use this in your script. In this variation, I've replaced that write host command with a little bit of logic. So in the show method that I'm calling in the message box class, rather than just saying that I can't get the driver, I say can't get the driver on this computer do you want me to run it on the local computer? And I use yes, no, and cancel buttons. And I save the result in this result variable. And if the value of result is yes, I call that getDriver function with the name of the local computer. Let's see how that works. Let's create that error. Whoops, that'll work too, actually. I've got yes, no, and cancel buttons. It says can't get driver on this odd remote computer. Run it on the local computer. If I click no, it just closes. But if I click yes, it runs it on the local computer and returns my drivers. Message boxes are so useful that I've written a little Spotlight article about them. A Spotlight article is like an MSDN reference page but it's written for PowerShell users, and it lists the most frequently used variations of the message box rather than all of them. So it takes you through how to create a message box, some tips and tricks for avoiding errors when using message boxes, and some of the most frequently used message box variations, message only, message and title, message title and specifying those buttons. We used yes, no, and cancel adding icons, setting the default, and adding options like a help button. So the next time you need to display a message to a user, an error message, or any kind of message that the user needs to acknowledge or respond to, try a message box. It's especially good for beginners because you can create one in just one line of PowerShell script. Hope this helps. Bye.